Hi, so in this video I'm going to discuss what is meant by the solo residual. So we've looked at the solo growth model and we can perhaps use this neoclassical Cobb-Douglas production function where we have output is given by our technology parameter A multiplied by the capital stock to the power of alpha and then multiplied again by the labor stock multiplied by 1 minus alpha and these alpha and powers of capital stock and labor stock are just telling us the relative shares of the national income that goes to each capital or each factor of production and what we can do is we can use growth rate rules and we can actually use what we call growth accounting to decompose these into the into each factor of production so we take the growth rates and if we use rules of logarithms since in this production function these things are all multiplied together we can decompose the growth rate of output into this expression here where we have the growth rate of the technology a plus alpha multiplied by the growth rate of our capital stock plus one minus alpha multiplied by the growth rate of the labor stock which we will sometimes define as being n and this ga we'll sometimes call g and so on but i'll just keep them as they are in this video just just for simplicity and what we can do is we can rearrange to get this ga term on the left hand side and this we do this by just subtracting these two terms for, away from both sides and we just get the ga is equal to the growth rate of output minus the growth rates of each factor of production and this ga is what is the topic of this video which is the solo residual solo residual and the reason we've rearranged such that we have got this solo residual on its own on the left hand side is because this can really show us what we actually mean by the solo residual and as I've written down it's the growth in well I haven't actually written it down but so the solo residual is the growth in our output that cannot be explained by increasing our primary factors of production. Um, we can see this in this first equation where we've got our growth in output here and this growth in output comes from a growth in the capital stock and it comes from a growth in the labor stock but anything that we can't explain through just increasing our capital and increasing our labor, increasing our pri or primary factors of production, anything that isn't encapsulated by that comes under the solar residual. So anything that isn't explained by an increase in the primary factor of production, this falls in our GA term, and this is all picked up by the solo residual. And a lot of research has gone into this, and as I have written down, we see that the growth in total factor productivity, and this total factor productivity, or TFP, we can just talk about as the growth in A, it is very important in explaining our growth in output per capita and the way we know this is because we can we can calculate and the growth in the capital stock and we can calculate the growth in our labor force year on year and we can also calculate the growth in our output and so anything that isn't covered by this is covered by the solar residual and this is why it's called a residual because it's just everything that's left over that we can't explain and some studies would say that this solar residual accounts to up to half of growth and and this is often taken to be productivity changes and so it's not an increase in just the capital stock it's improving the way we actually work with our capital improving the quality or our productivity and so this is very important but i say up to half of growth here because there is some debate some studies would say that this is about 20 percent of growth others would say it's a half and that's quite a range to think that productivity can be a fifth of growth or it can be half of growth that's quite a big difference when we're talking about growth which is such an important part of economics and so another thing to note here is that the solo growth model doesn't actually explain the source of these productivity changes we we know we use ga equals g and in the solo model this is just completely exogenous and it's constant and it's constant at growth rate g every year so 
we have something that could be accounting for half of our growth and it's just coming from just some exogenous parameter. And in fact, in the solo model, our growth is purely coming from this exogenous growth in, say, a balanced growth path. Per capita growth is purely coming from G. So the solo model doesn't explain this. So it's not very satisfactory. So we've had endogenous growth models, which do actually add some sort of technological process into the model so we can start to explain this G. And so our model can actually start to explain the growth, whereas in the solo model, it's just taken as unexplained. And so we don't actually have a reason for long run growth in the solo model. But there are a few flaws to this using this solo residual and hence the the big disparity in research where different researchers disagree about the actual impact that this solar residual has on growth. Um, but I will leave that to the next video to discuss the key shortcoming of the using the solo residual. So that will wrap up this video. Do leave a like if it was at all useful. Do subscribe for lots of future videos and check out the playlist for that next video.